what is going on everybody thanks for showing up on such short notice this was you know i wasn't sure the kelpie was going to come in today but it did and i'm like i i'm so anxious to build on this thing to see how good it is who knows i mean uh we'll see um this was sent over to me by eh pro and vaping with vic to to check this thing out so this is one of the few devices that i do own that i didn't spend my money on to to uh to review but uh hey you know i'm gonna keep it like it is regardless y'all know who i am, how i am so it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad we're gonna find out today uh, and i know vic's gonna be shaking in his boots but hey you know it is what it is what's up zan um so i want to do this live because i think it's better you know you get a little bit more audience interaction live doing it that way instead of uh let me do a review and then see what i get in the comments you know if i got it live I can try and get some feedback from y'all and see what y'all think and go from there. So uh, let me show y'all. Um, I got a you know on-screen display of what it looks like in stainless steel and in black. Um, but I got the box here. I'm going to show y'all what that looks like. Hey, Breeze. So I'm going to bring up the build cam here. This is the Kelpie, brand new in the box. This is the sample packaging. I'm sure the retail packaging is going to look somewhere somewhat different. Um, I'm actually hoping that instead of this sticker, they might actually emboss the box with Kelpie on here instead of just putting a sticker. I mean, y'all obviously won't see this sample not for sale on there. But um, you got Seek the, the Delight of Vape down here at the bottom. You got Kelpie, a Vaping with Vic project on this side. Um, www.szehpro.com on this side. Stainless steel. EH Pro on that side, Facebook, Instagram, Kelpie security code, QR code, all that good stuff. Your warnings on the back down here. Oh, look, don't vape in a van. I like it. I like it. <laughs> a lot. I like the way that this box actually opens very easy. There's a lot of them that's hard to open. See, I haven't even touched this, so y'all are seeing this just as soon as I am. I have not even taken this out of the box. Um, I do like the fact that this comes with a bubble glass. I'm probably going to be using this bubble glass. I'm not even sure what's in this box. Let's take the Kelpie out first. So here's the Kelpie. It does come packaged all by itself in a plastic bag which i could see that you know keeping dirt and debris out of there that's pretty cool you never know what's going to happen in shipping so let's have a look at this thing first if i can get the light right on it or and or focus that is not good there we go i like that engraving on the actual chimney itself the castle on the background, the Kelpie in front of that. And with my bad vision, I can barely see that. I can already see that these, uh, Vic, what's up? I can already see that the airflow has been cut out at an angle, which that, that right there, um, I don't know. I'm sure Vic came up with this. That's a great idea. Usually the beveled airflow on these style tanks keeps it from whistling. Um, I'm not starting over speed. Um, this is a nice wide open airflow hole, so uh, we're going to have to see how that works out. Ah, so this does, the airflow actually does have a stopper. You got fully closed and fully open, and it stops either way. So whatever you do on one side happens on the other side. That's pretty cool. At the bottom, you have your serial number, which I actually have serial number six, which is probably not going to focus, but I have serial number 0006. <laughs> there you go. That's kind of kind of in focus. A little bit off. I'm digging this drip tip. I don't know if y'all can get this on screen, but this has almost like a gold and pearl flake in the drip tip. Nice big wide drip tip. I like this knurling at the top and there's the slide open for your fill that's pretty cool this actually closes pretty good I like that so the first thing we're gonna do is pop this deck out of here let's see how tight this is on that's not too bad so the threading feels pretty smooth so far 
Let me see. Um, let me see how hard this thing is to thread back in. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, that's that's a good sign. I hate I hate tanks they have that that has a uh, you know this really fine threading that when you go try to thread it back in you cross thread it really easy. This one's actually as long as you backspin it before you start turning it in there, it catches right off the bat. So that's pretty good. I like that. So here's the actual build deck. Oh wow, it came in focus. Oh, it's Phillips screws. I wasn't sure whether they were Phillips or flathead or what. That is an interesting airflow to design. So I can see that the center holes are a lot smaller than the side holes. It looks like it gradually goes up on the sides. That's pretty cool. So this is definitely made for single coil. I mean, I, if you're going to put a, I don't see any way you could put a dual dual coil in here and get away with it just because there's not enough room in between here. And even if you did, they would have to be very small coils and you'd still have to try to force them down to get it close enough to the airflow. Pay attention. Um, what did I pass back? Uh, my review is, this is the, va yeah, this is Vaping with Vic Project along with EH Pro. <laughs> here's the inside the chimney has a slight dome not like a perfectly smooth dome but you can see that it curves in right there i'm going to pop off this glass tank because we're going to be installing the bubble glass tank because i'm all about not having to fill it as much and this looks like that the bubble glass is the same height as the standard glass so you're not going to be losing flavor for distance that's cool i like that feature since that slid on so easy i'm not going to worry usually i go back and um i lube up the uh lube up the o-rings to make sure that this will pop off easy but that actually went on there so it's two mils on the straight glass three and a half mils on the bubble glass there you go that's pretty cool i like that all right i'm really digging this drip tip I like the way that the drip tip actually, you know, has a, a basically a slide towards the center. I don't know if y'all can see that. Kind of curves down in towards the center. That's pretty cool. So, let's get on to the, the actual build deck. Um, what I noticed right off the bat is the way that this positive and negative is split apart, which is pretty cool. Which means um, I got some coils already sitting here. I was waiting for this thing, so... Which means you can actually build the um, closed arm system, which would be this way. So you'd have your positive on one side, negative on the other side. You could put it in like that because of the way the coils hook in onto the side here. Or you can do an open arm configuration. You can hook in one on this side and one on that side. You're still going positive and negative either way it does it. And no matter whether you wrap this clockwise or counterclockwise, you could still put these in. It could go this way. It can go that way. Which I think that's pretty cool. I like the way that this is done. It gives you a couple more options on how you want to mount this thing. Um, I, I, I think really the easiest way is the open arm. I mean you could use these. But what you're going to have to do is end up spreading the legs out. So they can catch on these sides here. So we're going to go with the open arm. And I have a Phillips screwdriver over here handy, I do believe. I did have one. Oh, there it is. I, I was pointing with it. That's why I can't find it. <laughs> so, if I'm going to do this on the bottom, which I think I am, or I could do it this way. Yeah, that way I can tilt it down. So, I'm going to use this side here and this side here. So, let's go ahead and see if we can break these loose here. Oh, that's, that actually comes out really easy. Vic, I'm hoping this is going to be really good, man. Don't let me down. And I want y'all to see that this is going to be so easy to install. It ain't even funny. There we go. That's pretty much in. I'm going to straighten this up, obviously. Uh, I got a little build rod here. The main thing you want to do is make sure these legs get all the way in the slots. All the way in the slots right there. And I'm going to adjust how high they are. I want it just in the center, right in the center of this airflow. I'm going to tighten this down. 
I should have my goggles on right now because I y'all know if I can build with this without my goggles on it must be easy to build on I'll tell you that because <laughs> if it was hard I, I could not do this without my goggles there's no way <laughs> Oh wow, that that just came together. Look at that. Now that may be a little high for the airflow. I mean, Vic, if you think that's too high, let me know. I'll bring it down some now that it's in focus. Is that too high or is that about right? Hey, Stina. And all I'm going to have to do is snap these leads off. This is um for those wondering, this is uh dual core 26 gauge Kenthal with 36 gauge Clapton around it. It's all Canthal though. I actually have one, two, three, six wraps. I thought I had five wraps, but uh, my other one's five wraps. Oh well. We'll go with the six wraps. This is actually going to bring the ohms up a little bit, which I don't mind. Because I don't know I don't know what kind of wattage we're going to be vaping this thing at yet, because I've never tried it. I don't I think the only person that has tried it is Vic so far so um, we're actually gonna burn this coil in first instead of just throwing cotton in there like Vic does but um <laughs> I gotta give him hell ah uh, you keep it in the middle but you can push it down if you want all right either way Vic we're gonna see how this thing glows this mod always asks you, is it a new coil? I kind of like that. So I'm going to hit up for yes. And right now it's saying it's 0.38 ohms. No, 0.24. I'm sorry, 0.24. That's going to change here in a second. Let me see if we can burn these in. Actually, I should be using my ceramic tweezers. There we go. Now you can just power through this. I do like to strum these a couple times. I mean, I just wrapped these things, so... These aren't pre-made coils. <laughs> Got a hot spot. Couple hot spots going on. That's the importance of, of burning these coils in so you know that you don't have any hot spots. I'm also going to double check the tightness on these. I always go back, especially after you, you preheat your coils, go back and double check that you have these uh, screws tight. Why can I not? Thank you. And that would be the wrong screw. That would be one of the reasons. I really need my goggles, guys. I cannot see what I'm doing. Okay, that one's tight, and I need this one tight, not the other one that I was just tightening on like a dummy. There we go. Now it's tight. It's amazing how much better these things glow when you, um, uh, did you trim that lead short enough? Let's check, Speed. Um, let me get my goggles, because I, I honestly can't see what I'm doing. I had one lead a little long. I see the one you're talking about, Speed. Let me see if I can get it a little closer. I, yeah, you definitely don't want that lead sticking out. There we go. How's that? It's right up flush with it now. There's nothing hanging out anymore. If that can touch, I would be really surprised. Hey, Vapor Mom. Yeah, see, I couldn't see that speed because, you know, my... Wow. Okay, so I did notice... Which I think I saw before, but this has no catcher for your wick. So I'm going to have to use very little wick on this. So that when the chimney comes down, it'll push it barely into this groove, but not all the way down. Let me see what we're getting ohm-wise now. 0.24, that's actually right where I want it. Um, I can deal with that. So we're going to get some cotton and wick this thing up. Um, now I did not check the box. We might want to check the spare box that comes out. This was actually in the Kelpie box. I'd hate to not show you all that. 
So what do we get in the box here? Now that I have my goggles on. Oh, you actually get some coils in here. Those are some nice fused Claptons in there. Four wraps. You get your Phillips screwdriver. You get spare post screws. You got some spare O-rings and some good old Japanese cotton. Heck yeah. So it actually comes with a tool you're going to need to tighten your post down. So that that's a bonus in case you can't find a Phillips laying around the house or something. You'll be able to use that. That's cool. Now this is the sample pack. So I don't believe I'm going to have. Wow. Okay. I was wrong. <laughs> I thought, oh, I'm not going to have an instruction manual or anything. I don't even know if Vic has one of those. Vic, do you have an instruction manual? Look at that. The Kelpie, a Vaping with Vic project. I like it. They done it with a blue screwdriver. Look at this, Vic. I hope the other side's in English. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I hope the other side's in English. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So what do we got here? It says contents, one Kelpie, two pre-made coils, a user manual, warranty card, certification card, a glass tube, three O-ring screwdriver, Phillips head screws, and cotton. It doesn't say that it comes with two glass tubes. I guess it don't count the one that's actually on the tank. It does show you that the straight tank is two mils and that the bubble tank is three and a half mils. The material is SUS. Okay. I don't know what that stands for. Filling is top filling, 510 threaded, airflow adjustment, yes. Now correct me if I'm wrong, Vic, I do believe this is a 24 millimeter tank. I will break out the little my little calipers. Here's your certificate of authenticity right here. Boom. And then your warranty card. That's cool. It's Kel Pie. Kel Pie? Stainless steel 316 is what that means, Demon Hunter. Thank you, because I didn't know what SUS means. <laughs> um, let's see what we got on the base here as far as um, size goes. I'm going to try to get right up on this. Now, I don't know what Vic gets. I'm getting 24 and a half really right at the base yeah that's right at 24 and a half so between 24 25 millimeter most all mods nowadays take that anyway so you're gonna be fine if you have anything that takes 24 millimeter up to whatever whatever size you want so here we go. We're going to wick this thing and see how this thing actually vapes. What's Speed doing? The, the blue Kelpie just went on sale. That's messed up, Speed. That is messed up. <laughs> Y'all know I like blue. All right. That's messed up so bad. So I'm cutting off a quarter piece of Muji, which is anytime I'm doing a three millimeter coil, which is what this is, um, I use about this much, this much cotton. I'm going to try my best to wick this right the first time. I know if I over wick this that I'm going to get a dry hit from hell. So we will just have to see. I'm usually pretty good at, at getting it wicked right. But, you know, there's always a first. Especially since this is my first time wicking this. I could definitely screw it up. I could definitely. Screw, what's up, Albie? How's it going? I could definitely screw this up. So you want this wick to be able to slide back and forth, but still be tight in there. Now, the question is, where should I cut this at? I do believe if I cut it straight at the base, it's not going to be enough. I don't think that's enough. See, right there, that's going to leave a little too much. That's a little too much. So, let's go back a little further. Let's go back right here. I don't want to go back too far because then I won't have enough cotton, but I definitely don't want to overweight this thing either. There we go. And after we get to that point, 
What's up, Morgan? That's too much? What about now, Vic? Because I know about the delay. I'm trying to look. Let me get my goggles down. Then maybe I can see what I'm doing. There's a little much on the bottom right there. I'm going to cut that back. If this thing floods because I don't have enough cotton, that's going to be y'all's fault. It actually probably looks more than it does. How about that? Um, this is barely right there. This one maybe needs a little bit more. Maybe a little bit. I'm going to strum it out first, though. And then if I get it wet with juice, I believe I can pop this down in there. Good things coming. So cut it short enough to shuffle. All right, I'm going to shuffle it. I'm going to go ahead and juice these wicks up so that I can place them where I want them before I set the chimney down. I love the way that vapor is actually coming off dead center. I don't know if y'all can see that, but that vapor is coming right out of the center, which is going to go. This is Nilla Nuts Talion by Higgy Sigs. <laughs> y'all know I vape Nilla Nuts all day, every day. V1, definitely the V1. That's my favorite. I mean, they also have a V2, but I would, if I, if y'all are going to pick up some Nilla Nuts, which is basically a hazelnut vanilla custard, my all day vape. Love the stuff, and, I, and I've been vaping for quite a number of years. And it takes a while to find your, you know, your your all-day vape, I would call it. But um, that's, that's it for me. I've seen people that still have been vaping years and years, and they still can't find their all-day vape. I mean, they'll vape something, and they'll just get tired of it. And then they move on to something else. So I'm basically just barely covering... The wicking channels right here not even trying to go down into them just barely covering them I'm actually going to back up the wick a little bit so that it just barely touches in there and if, if, if this is too much I will take it apart and cut it again I don't care all right now if I can't close this down on here and that means I got too much in here, don't it? That actually closed really easy. Right down on there. So I didn't catch any cotton in there. And it's going to push it down. Now I know there's an arrow on here somewhere. There's the arrow. The arrow that lets you know which way this thing slides. And I'm going to fill this thing up. Whoa. Okay, don't fill it up too quick because it'll shoot back out at you. <laughs> it's got an air bubble. I think that this fill hole could be slightly bigger, in my opinion. I mean, I'm getting, because of the fact that the chimney's so close, I'm, this is making an air bubble across here and it's bubbling back at me. So far, that's all I've found so far. So, I mean, I know you're limited on room because of how far this slides. I mean, you can see they would have to go more towards the outside of the tank and maybe shave off another millimeter right there. And that would be perfect right there, I think. All right, let's go up to the, the main cam and see how this thing is going to vape. That's the main big question, right? 
Wow, that's the airflow all the way open? Are you kidding me right now? Okay. I have the airflow all the way open, okay? This is a slightly restrictive lung hit. I mean, it, it, I don't really want to call it restrictive. It's not... Um, it's not mouth to lung, definitely, but it's not one of those wide open airflows. It's actually very quiet. I do like that. Um, now let me set it to the right wattage because 45 watts is not enough for this. I'm going to try 65 watts just to start it off. We're at 0.24 ohms right now. Here we go. Hold on a minute. Okay, that one's not the truth. It matches the gear. Oh, does it? Let's try that. Let's let's test that right now. They're very similar, Vic. I think I think the Kelpie actually has a slight bit less than the gear. They're very similar. Maybe because the gear is the gear all the way open. Yeah, that's all the way open. <laughs> Ken, don't mess with me about the blue kelpie. All right, y'all, y'all are giving me hell about that. Okay, I'll agree with Vic. The gear has a very. If you already own a gear RTA. Very, very similar airflow. I do think the gear is a little bit, maybe 5% more open than the Kelpie, which I actually appreciate uh, a more restrictive just because it bumps the flavor up that much more. Um, this, wow. I want to get past the initial saturation of the wick because I need to know... Did I put too much wick? Am I going to get a dry hit? So we're going to just chain vape this thing. We're going to see how it works out. Woo! Okay, if it keeps giving me that kind of flavor, it's on, Vic. It's on, man. That's that's damn good. I, I, think, I think it's just, I think it's lying to me. Hold on, let me. Let me blow out some of these clouds. Holy moly. Craig F., you are not going to be disappointed, uh, disappointed with the flavor in this. Um, I, there's no reason for me to lie to you guys. I would tell Vic to his face if it sucked. And no, I'm getting really good flavor off of this. Holy moly. I actually may be able to turn the wattage down. That seems almost too hot. I do see the bubbles coming up. I don't know if y'all can see that. <coughs> I'm, I'm worried now about dry hits. That's what I'm worried about. Yep, it's definitely now the initial flavor boost that I gave it with the bottle. Is going away and now it's just strictly going off the wicking I may have a little too much wick in there it's definitely smoothed out you don't hear any more crackling anymore because now it's it's bubbling like crazy though I mean it's definitely wicking what does it vape like at 40 watts I will try that uh, Sue let me go down to 40 now this is a 0.24 ohm coil. Uh, make make sure you know that. You know you don't want to run low ohm coils. It's such a a low wattage. But we'll we'll try it. Okay, at 40 watts, it's still giving me the vapor production, but the flavor went down significantly. So, but if you were to put say a 0.4 ohm coil in here that 40 watts would be perfect so if you if you like more around the 40 watt range 40 50 watts then you want to be around 
0 0.4, 0 0.5 ohm coil. That's perfect for that. 0.2, I usually go up between 60 and 75. I'm, I'm usually 75. I rarely ever go above 75 watts. I mean, it's just too much. That's good, but I'm definitely, I'm definitely losing flavor because it's not enough wattage for it. I'm gonna try 50. We're just gonna go in between. The flavor is there. I, I really, really think I may have a little too much wick in there. Just a little too much. Wow. This is not bad, Vic. Good job. Yep. I think I have too much wick. I'm going to have to back this off. It's actually, now it's starting to get dry because I put too much wick in there. If I take this out and y'all can see, how does it compare to the Boris V2? Ooh, that's a good one, Speed. You know, I think the big difference between this and the Boyus is, may, number one, the airflow. Um, number one, airflow. This is definitely less airflow. The flavor is on point, though. This actually keeps up if I don't chain vape it. If I chain vape it, then I have too much wick. See, if I'm not chain vaping it, I'm seeing the bubbles coming up. It's just not quick enough for me to high-speed vape it, which... I don't, ha I mean, I know Vic vapes a lot. He vapes really quickly. So you're going to need less wick if you want to vape this, like chain vape it. There is nothing wrong with that at all. Um, what's two things I would, ch what's, what would I change about this? Two things. Um, number one, I would uh, open up. See, even now, even now, I'll show y'all. I have an air bubble right here. This, if this was a little bit bigger, see, I just popped the air bubble. This is this is making an air bubble right here. Now I don't know if this needs to be slanted so that it, it's. But if you slant it, then you may develop a leak right here. You don't want to leak, but I also don't like when you try to fill this. I mean the. The chimney is so close, it's causing an air bubble right here where you fill it. I mean, obviously, if you go if you go slow, make it blue. Yeah, that's another one right there, Michael. That's another one. Um, <laughs> make it blue. That's not really a con, though. Um, that's the uh, one thing. The other thing, I mean, this is subjective, obviously. The packaging, the only thing I would change is instead of using stickers on the packaging, I would actually emboss Kelpie on the box. It's not like they're going to use this box for, well, maybe they will. Maybe they'll use it for another atomizer, but I think they should actually emboss this into the box. Other than that, I mean, I like the packaging. It comes apart nice and easy. I, I got no problems with that, but um, yeah, this is vaping really good so far. I really, really want to back the, back the, the wick off just a little bit, just a little bit. There's nothing wrong with the flavor coming off that. That's as good as I got. I mean, I get that kind of flavor off the gear all day long. If Vic was trying to go after something similar to the gear but still have a bigger tank, then he nailed it because that's what it is. I mean, here's the gear next to it. You can see that the Kelpie is definitely bigger than the gear. Definitely bigger. But it still pay it still packs that same flavor hit, and the drip tips are obviously a lot bigger on the Kelpie. Bring up the cost. Well, right now, um, the only place I know that has them on pre-order is uh, Nature Vape. Um, Nature Vape has them. I, Vic, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure what the actual price is. They're around. 30 pounds or something like that. I'd have to look back at Nature Vape's website. I, li I literally got this and just went live, guys. I did not. This is not a review. This is a first look. <laughs> we, 
when I review this, this is, I'm going to go a lot more detail. I definitely want to try this with um, with a shorter wick. I did get something else in today, but I'm gonna. this is going to be on another video sometime. I did get the Glass V2 in. Uh, they still have, look at my packaging. It's all jacked up. Um, they still haven't put the, the number two on the label, and I just got this. Uh, $29.99. See, I said 30 I'm off by a penny. $29.99. So I have the Glass V2. Can't wait to try this thing. Um, Rewick it, we would like to know. All right, now, this is the main thing. Um, if I rewick this, I'm going to have to vape it just a little bit more. So that way, when I take the bottom off, I don't have a flood. So we'll, we'll try to... We, uh, Steve, I, I completely understand. If you have it on pre-order, you want to know, right? I do too, so we're going to see. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I I wish I could say this sucked on flavor, but I can't. Honestly. That gum. And if there's any any juice that I know really good, it's Nilla Nuts. I mean, I vape that every day, all day. <laughs> And I've tried it in atomizers where it completely has no flavor at all. It just sucks completely. And then I've tried it on really good ones, which this is definitely in the top right there. Mm. Damn good job, Vic. See, um, people that design stuff like this, they actually take their time and think about stuff, especially the airflow. That, that little bit right there, just just curving that airflow in that makes it quiet, that's that's a huge, huge benefit for people because they don't like that whistle. And, and I really think that curving it in like that is going to stop it from making that really loud noise. And it, it seems like it's doing a good job of it. No. Not loud at all. Yep. I almost got it low enough. This is taking a lot longer than I thought to vape the juice. Y'all can see how high it is still. It's taking a lot longer to vape this thing. The black would be awesome, Zan. But hey, I don't mind the stainless. I don't mind at all. I got number six. I would love to have number four, but I'll take number six. The QP or the Kelpie? Ooh, Adam. That depends. Um... They both have excellent flavor. I have the I have the QP on one of my mods. I just took it off actually. Um, now the M25 great on flavor. Don't get me wrong. The Fatality M25 really good. Um, the top cap with the half turn is really good. But this slides open to fill, and that's even easier than half a turn in my opinion. The only thing I would, like I said, the only thing I would change about that is make the kidney hole a little bit bigger so that it doesn't form a bubble when you try to fill it. That's what's happening to me. And the only reason that's happening is because the chimney is so close to the fill. So if you back off your drip nozzle a little bit or curve it, you should be able to avoid the bubble. I'll find that out as I fill it more. Um... The regular, the original fatality, I don't, you can't touch, you can't touch that tank. <laughs> Just, and, and, and I don't mean flavor-wise. These, the, the Kelpie and the fatality have excellent flavor, don't get me wrong, but the, the ease of use on the fatality, half turn, pull the whole tank apart, I, I haven't seen another tank on the market that does that. And whether I bought this or it was sent to me, it, I mean, you can't touch that design. This one does come apart really easy, though. I like the way the threading is done really good. Is the drip tip changeable? Let's find out. Peach, because I haven't touched it. This is an 810 drip tip. It does actually have the rubber O-ring inside. So all your standard 810 drip tips should fit this, no problem. This is a nice drip tip that comes with it, though. I ain't gonna lie. Um, you can't really... There we go. Can you see that, like, gold flake and stuff that's in there? The camera's not doing it any justice, especially because it's not focusing. But, they, you know, I don't I don't have that big-time big, big -time camera recording equipment. I can focus that for you guys, though. Well, it's starting to focus now. There we go. 
I can focus it more than that. Let's try. Mm. Configure manually. That's what I want to do. Oh wow! I never inst I never installed the uh, the focus. It's set to auto. Let's try and change the focus. I can't. S I can't even see it. Great. It won't let me. <laughs> it won't let me move it where I can see. Okay, we're just gonna cancel that because that didn't work at all. There, it's in focus. Go figure. Really pretty drip tip, actually. I don't think Vic's going to have a problem with the reviews on this. Um, if, if there's a reviewer that comes that says this has sucky flavor, then they're not doing something right. I mean, that's uh, honest opinion right there. They're not doing something right. I was changing focus on the wrong camera. There you go. That You're probably right there, Speed. Yeah, I was. You're right. Jesus. No wonder it didn't work. All right. Let me see if I can change my wicking just a little bit. I'm going to I'm gonna take the bottom off of this, hopefully, without... You, know, you can see when I have this upside down, the liquid's down, so I can actually pop this off with, hopefully, without spilling everything. All right. Let's put this on a stand, and we're going to try and butcher back the wick even a little bit more. What's up, Hersene? You can see the wick saturated still, but I want a really strong saturation, so we're going to go and pop this up here. And I'm going to cut it back even further, hopefully without making it flood or anything like that. Is that enough? That's got to be enough there. I mean, that's pretty much non-existent now. That is the shortest bow tie ever. I have to make it sure I fill up this top place because if I don't, I'm going to have a flooding like you wouldn't believe. All right, let's try that. Where did I set the tank? Oh, <laughs> I'm blind. I would just put the top on if I, there we go. If I could hold my mouth right. All right, we're going to see how this works out. That's my tenderfoot stand. Let me screw this on tight. Make sure she's all clean. Am I still on the build cam? I am. All right. I got the airflow completely closed. I do see that. I will fix that. Now, can you adjust the airflow while it's down tight? You can. That's a good thing because sometimes when you tighten these atomizers down, you can't move the airflow. This is difficult to get to if you got big fingers like me, but I'm still able to get in there and turn it. It still moves. It's not like cranked down where you can't move it. All right, let's see if we're going to get any flooding now. Oh, it's asking me, is it a new coil? Yeah, sure it is. Holy moly, the ohms changed like you wouldn't believe. Okay, something happened there because my ohms just doubled. I'm at 0.43 now. Hmm. Which is technically where it should be because maybe I hit that it wasn't a new coal last time. Now we're at 40 watts at 0.43 ohms.
Wow. Much better. I ain't even got much better. That's the right ohms for this ohm. That's the right wattage, I should say, for this ohm coil. So why wasn't it reading my ohms correctly the first time? Okay, this is what I think happened. Now this this particular it's not the it's not the uh, hey Roy, this is not the atomizer's fault. This mod asks you every time you screw the tank on, is it a new coil? I may have accidentally hit no. My last coil was 0.24, so it was trying to adjust for that. Now it's actually at 0.43, which is what it should be. Six wraps, dual fuse, dual core, 26 gauge fuse clapped in with 36 gauge around it, all canthal. 0.43 is correct. So now we're at the right ohms and the right wattage because I'm at 40 watts and this is dynamic. Y'all can see the vapor production. There's no... See ya, balls. Alright, now we're going to go with the chain vaping. I think this is going to work now. It really feels like there's not going to be any dry hits now. Lord. <coughs> Anymore I'm gonna nick myself out. Okay, that's that's on point there guys. Holy moly I'm dizzy. That's, uh, if it was zero nick, no problem, but six milligram like that is too much. <coughs> I'm not going to pass out speed. Whoo! That's something serious right there. How do I rate it out of 10? It depends, Gailey. What do you, you mean overall or... There's, I mean, there's very few cons I can find on this. Very few. Um, number one, and I've said this already, the, the kidney-shaped hole that's at the fill top, I think it either needs to be widened or angled in some kind of way where it doesn't develop an air bubble when you're filling it. Very subjective. You may not develop, you may not get that at all. I did. It may not happen the next time I fill it. I'll go to fill it here in a minute and see if it does it again. Maybe it was just a fluke. Um, and the packaging, I mean, they shouldn't just put a sticker on there that says Kelpie. I mean, EH Pro and Vic deserve to have their name embossed in the box. It may cost them a few cents more, but go ahead, uh, Bill, report it away. Um, just go ahead and um, do that. But I, I think they should emboss it in the box. Make it fancy, you know, put it in gold, Kelpie, you know. Put the, put the actual logo for the Kelpie behind the writing of the word Kelpie. There's my suggestion. Kelpie with the Kelpie logo behind it. Bam! And I don't mean up here in the viewing window. I mean right here where the sticker is. Kelpie with the, the logo behind it. The Kelpie logo that's right there on my screen now. The castle with the, with the Kelpie and the water. That would be freaking awesome. Just a little bit, just little things like that. Um, the drip tip, since it's interchangeable, I like that. It's not proprietary. You can put your own 810 drip tip in there. So whether you get stainless or black, depending on your mod choice, you can put whatever color drip tip to match your mod. I know a lot of people love matchy matchy. So um, this actually matches. <laughs> this matches because I got that marble smoke deal going on, and that's what this is. So that, that actually matches. Who gives a crap about the box? Hey, Pete, some people are particular about their packaging. Trust me. Uh, but I like the fact that, uh, Bill, I don't know if you can see this, but see how they curved in. Let me show you on the Bill Cam. See how the airflow is actually curved in right here? That definitely cuts down on all, all the whistling and, and noise. So this is a quiet one like the, uh, like the, uh, the gear is. Saves in cost. I understand, Vic. I know. They won't change it. Daggone it. Well, you know. You're okay with the sticker? I, yeah. 
Speed is subjective. It's definitely a subjective con. I, I, like I said, it doesn't bother me personally, but some people are like, I need, I need, I need the logo on the box, man. You know, I want it on there. I, I mean, I've seen like this. That's there's nothing fancy about that box. I mean, this was a long time ago. The Segeli 150 watt, but there's nothing fancy about. It. I mean, besides the fact that this is in rainbow or shiny red, I guess. Other than that, there's nothing fancy about that box. Higgy, I, I agree. Um, well, although, although I do not throw away my boxes, um, I I keep like look. Just to show you, here's a Nautilus mini box that I've had for years. So I keep boxes of my atomizers. It doesn't matter to me because I can see what it is and what went in there. The main reason I keep most of the boxes that I get stuff is because I keep my spares in there. So if I ever break a tank or lose an O-ring, I know exactly which box. Because if you tried to store all those O-rings in bins or something, how would you know? I mean, if you have a big vape collection, which I do. So if you have a small collection, then you know, okay, this is where my O-rings are for this atomizer. That's fine. But if you got a lot... The only way for me to know the right O-rings to use is to go to the box and go, okay, this is for the Nautilus Mini. Boom, boom, change it out, I'm done. Other than that, yeah, there's no reason to be worried about the box. Oh, I see what you're saying, Higgy. Yeah, as far as juice goes, I, I really don't understand why you have to have a flashy bottle to sell juice. I think it's more about the product that's inside the bottle. Um, I've had bottles that are really fancy with LED lights and everything, and the juice inside it sucked horribly. So it's not all about the bottles. It is definitely not all about the bottles. So oh, I've already had a Gorilla bottle pour all over my lap because the whole top of it popped out. If if those and that was the new version 3 style gorilla bottle that thing popped out and poured juice all over my lap it sucked i hate those with a passion and the problem with them is they make the needle so small and you have to put so much pressure to get the juice come out you know you're getting impatient and you squeeze it harder and then the whole top pops off and you lose half your bottle right then or more you may lose the whole bottle uh I'm having to drink a lot, Vic. You got the. I'm nicked out over here. I vaped half of. This is actually holding up very well. For as much as I vape this, look how much juice I still have left. It's a little above half full. That's pretty good. Mm. Vic, I got to tell you, man, the flavor on this thing is one of the best I have had. Damn. I don't understand that and it's not the build design has a lot to do with it this the way the airflow is restricted just enough really is what kills it for me it's because it, it's it's like the right mixture of airflow for the single coil to make this thing just really pump out the flavor It's doing it man. it's doing it Mm. Yeah, we need Kelpie t-shirts. We got to have Kelpie t-shirts now. I got to I got to stop vaping that because I'm getting nicked out on the thing. It's ridiculous. Really, I mean for a single coil, that is really pumping out the the clouds. And it just goes to show a lot of people are like, "Oh, I need I got to have dual coil. I got to have dual coil." No, no. You can you can get a really good vape from a single coil. Really good vape. I know in the past there used to be some atomizers that were single coil that just did not cut it and you you would almost have to find one uh, RDA or something that was dual coil to, to actually give you the flavor that you were looking for but now with the innovation that's going on single coil RTAs or RDAs are really stepping up the game and they, they're getting so much better now this is 
really good. Mm. Vic! Damn it, Vic. Now I'm going to have to try this with a fruity vape. Now, this was a custard vape. If it does this well on custards, because custards are usually hard to put some, you, know, you put a custard in there, and if it doesn't have really good flavor, the custard taste doesn't really come out good. Fruits, usually you can slide by on. So I'm assuming if I go from this to a fruity, the fruity is going to be way more flavorful. I, I don't know how it can be, but I'm just guessing that the fruit's really going to pop on this. <laughs> Bill, you're so funny. To me, now I don't know how they say it over there because they got the aluminium, but that says kelpie. If it's kelpie, I uh, I don't know. Every time Vic said it, it's kelpie, so I'm going by what Vic said. Kelpie. Mm. I can't wait to let other people try this and then see if they can, uh, you know, I want to take this to some vape shops and let them hit this and then see if they get the same that same experience that I'm getting because I can't be the only one that thinks this now I know all the other reviewers the big reviewers and everybody else that's ordered this or or have them sent for review are gonna be getting these in if they have a different review of this than I do I'd be completely surprised there's no way the only way I could see them faulting this is if they don't wick it correctly that's it because I can tell you right now, if you put too much wick, it's going to dry hit. It is going to dry hit, which it did. It didn't really dry hit on me. It got less saturated. Let's go with that. Less saturated. I'm going to try to fill this again now because it's getting lower. It's not all the way down. But I want to see if it still bubbles up again when I try to fill it. So, I mean, like I said, maybe it was a fluke. Maybe it was a one-time thing. I'm going to try to fill this a little differently and maybe it won't bubble up at the top. I'm going to hold this sideways over here way in the corner. That seems to work. That worked perfect. So what it is is I had the needle nose right in the center. And when I was trying to fill this, it made the juice run off to the side on that way and over to the side this way, and it, it formed a bubble. When I held it all the way in the corner, it filled right up, no bubble. So maybe he can stick with the, the, the design that they have because they can't really, you can't really bevel this down because if you do that, then when you close it, it's not going to seal and you're going to have juice going everywhere. But you can see I don't have any leaks whatsoever coming out of this. There's no even... Um, there's no saturation on the actual mod from it venting out either, which is a bonus also. That really, <laughs> just filling this up really saturated that wick. Oh my goodness. That's too much. Guys. Whoever pre-ordered the Kelpie, you're not going to be disappointed. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I was going to use the coily tool to actually cut the cut the legs, but since I did the uh, the open arm configuration, you can't really use the coily tool for open arm unless you slide in one side, cut it, flip it around, cut it again. Which I will figure that out by the time I do my next show. I'll have that figured out. And I'll be able to give y'all the exact measurements to use for the people that own the Corley tool. If not, it's been it's popping up in chat right now. Um, go get you one. Uh, then you'll be able to cut them exactly. That way you don't even have to cut the legs. As soon as you put the coil in and line it up, it'll be perfect. Tighten it down, you're done. Then you don't even have to worry about cutting the legs because it's already done for you. How easy, I mean, you saw how easy I put the coil in. It's, li it's literally click and it's done. 
just make sure the legs get in far enough to where the screws are going to crank down on top of them and you're done. Ah, Nature Vapes. There you go, Grant. Yeah, Nature Vapes has them on pre-order. I know for sure. I do believe Element Vape and Vapor DNA should be getting at least the pre-orders started any time now. Um, I, I think I think the way that Element Vape and, and Vapor DNA, they, they wait until they know their shipment's on the way. Then they'll post a pre-order, and then they'll have them within, like, no time. I have seen them do pre-orders way before they get their stock, but maybe they're waiting for the Kelpie. I don't know. But congratulations, Vic, on making an outstanding RTA. I, I, I wish I could fault you on a lot of stuff just so I could give you hell about it, but I really can't. I even, I even think that the bubble tank on this looks really good compared to this. That just doesn't look right. I'm sorry. It doesn't look right. This is the TF tank that's from Smock that comes with the morph kit. That bubble, and they give you this big, ugly-looking vape band that goes around it. I, I don't like that. This bubble actually looks good. It actually conforms to the tank, which is, that just makes it look that much better. There you go. You also can get, yeah, I forgot about it. You can get it from Empire Vape Co. They have uh, pre-orders going right now also. If you go look, Vic posted um, the three places you can order. Uh, I believe it's Heaven Gifts. Empire Vape Co. and Nature Vape. Those are the three places that you can get the Kelpie from pre-order right now. Get you one of these. It's actually on the cheaper side for RTAs as far as that goes. I don't think you should have to pay an arm and a leg. Like, you know, take the Fatality. The Fatality is like 95 bucks when you could buy them. That's expensive. Now, is it worth it? Yes. But I think the Kelpie should be worth more money. I do. Um, EH Pro always keeps their stuff on the lower end, on the on the pay spectrum, which I, I appreciate that. And but they have not slacked off in the quality. The threading on this has been spot on the money. The design is etched into the chimney. It looks really cool in here. I like that. It actually lines up right in the front, <laughs> right in the front when I screwed it down. Just little things like that makes it look cool. Gum, Vic. How have you been vaping on this all this time and act like it was nothing? I, I, I think you're being slick, Vic. I think he was like, I know how good it is. I'm going to let somebody else say it, though. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Because, dad gum, man. And who better to make a tank than somebody that's been reviewing for quite a long time? That, that can go through and pick all the faults in tanks and say, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. That's that's the people that need to design the tanks. Mm. Man, Vic. All right. Well, the Glass V2, I don't know when I'm going to do my next show. Can't tell you. It is long. I mean... It, Ta technically, Talion, this is not a review. I don't want people to think this is a review. That would be stupid for me to say, hey, I just got this in. I'm reviewing it. That's that's not how you do things, especially if I was technically a reviewer. I would be shamed into the corners of hell for, do for reviewing this product in five minutes. No. Well, an hour, but still. I haven't had it long enough to really go through and say okay well this needs to do this way this this is how it should be wick this is this you know that's what ha you have to have this thing at least a week in my opinion at least a week before you can give an honest true review on it which i'll try to do dadgum approved that's right hunter dadgum approved i was scared I ain't going to lie, I was scared to cut the wicks back that far. That's why I didn't do it. But even after I did and I thought I was at the point of making it leak, it hasn't leaked a drop. Not a single drop. I was worried about that because it doesn't have a catcher for the wick, but no problems.
Yeah, Unicron, I, and I agree. I understand that there's people that take them right out of the box and review them. I don't think that it's fair to to do a review on a product that you haven't tried out. You know, um, I'll be vaping this thing all week long, trying different builds, different um, juices. I definitely have to, I mean, I know this juice, but I want to try juices that are like real fruity that I don't usually vape. And um, you're, you're very welcome, Craig. Um, if you got one of these on order, dude, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Just remember, cut the wicks short. You see, I had to go back in and make them even shorter. Uh, Jay is not out of box. Really? I, I thought Jay always kept his stuff. I didn't know he did it out of the box. Cool. Well, I'm sure Jay Hayes will be getting one of these. Hopefully, he doesn't hammer it. I don't see why he would. Hopefully, he doesn't get a broke one either. Mmm. That's good. That's good stuff. All right, guys. I'm going to bump off here. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, go out and get you a Kelpie. That's all I can say. Um, for right now, I mean, it's it's doing an awesome job. I cannot complain with it. Um, more like a variety show. There you go, Talion. I'm a variety show. I'm just here to entertain. That's it. <laughs> but thanks again to EH Pro and Vic for sending this over. Um I really appreciate it. It's like first time this has ever happened, really. So I really appreciate it. And this, this is, this is not. One, I'm glad it's not one that I can just go. Oh, this is crap, and throw it to the side. No, I'll be using this. You'll see when I do a show. You're gonna see me using this thing because it's the way it's gonna go. Y'all have a great day. Thanks, and I hope everybody had a happy Easter. I'm sorry I didn't say it earlier. I hope everybody had a happy Easter if you celebrate it. And um, we'll see you guys real soon. I got to get busy back to doing everything I was doing. But I will catch you guys real soon. Have a great one.